Have you ever woken up in the morning motivated to get after it? So you get your workout in, you meal prep, you drive past the Dunkin' Donuts on the way to work, you make great decisions all day, only to end up blowing it and totally self-sabotaging, eating everything in the pantry that you can get your hands on right before bed that same night. Then you wake up the next morning feeling the sense of shame wondering why you always end up falling into this same exact pattern, swearing to never do it again, but nothing ever really changes. Maybe you've even been able to commit for a few weeks or even a few months at a time to living a healthy lifestyle. You lost weight, started feeling really good about yourself and started getting compliments from friends, family and coworkers. But for one reason or another, you eventually always find yourself right back to square one. Well, by the end of this video, you're gonna understand why this keeps happening to you, and more importantly, what you need to do to stop self-sabotaging once and for all. Today, we're exploring the shadow of the unconscious mind. Now, you may or may not have heard of Carl Jung before, who was a Swiss psychiatrist and founder of what's known as analytical psychology. Jung taught that human consciousness is made up of five different segments. You have the self, which is the sum total of the conscious and the unconscious, which makes up the overall personality of an individual. The shadow, which is filled with personality traits that conflict with those of the ego. So we end up repressing them deep down in the subconscious only to have them fester and create havoc from within. More on this later. The anima and the animus, which are the feminine image of a man's psyche and the masculine image of a woman's psyche. And finally, the persona, also known as the conformity archetype, which is how we present ourselves to the world in an act of preservation to avoid harsh judgments from others. Today, we're talking about the shadow specifically and the role it plays in causing an endless loop of self-sabotage in our lives, ultimately keeping us from reaching our full potential. Now we're gonna get deep, so before we do, do me a favor and like the video and subscribe to the channel before your mind gets completely blown to smithereens. All right, now that you've done that, let's dive in. Contrary to the name and how some people talk about it, the shadow is not just a bunch of negative qualities that we can't see and are trying to ruin our lives from a subconscious level. Although they can end up having that effect if not understood or dealt with. As a matter of fact, the shadow isn't a list of qualities at all, but more of a place in your subconscious that your ego exiles certain personality traits to. Because these qualities contradict certain worldviews that the ego holds to be true in an attempt to avoid what's known as cognitive dissonance or holding two conflicting beliefs, the ego represses them instead. Maybe it'll be helpful if I share an example. Let's say as a young child, you're running around your grandma's house being all crazy and you accidentally bang your knee on the corner of a dresser. Your grandma then comes in and in her best attempt to make you feel better says, Let's get you some ice cream. Ice cream always makes everything better. Seems innocent enough. But because you're so young and impressionable, what happens is this starts to shape a worldview and you start looking at everything through the lens of sugary snacks always make me feel better. A few weeks later, you lose a little league game and your parents take you to go get a blizzard from Dairy Queen to help you cope with the loss. Your dad has a bad day at work a few months later and comes home and yells at you because you left your shoes in the middle of the kitchen floor. Totally freaks out, feels bad about it, and then takes you out for ice cream afterwards to apologize. Now it's more than just a thought. It actually becomes your reality. You become somebody who uses sweets as a coping mechanism to deal with things that cause you physical or emotional pain. But what happens if along the way you start also getting feedback from the outside world that contradicts this worldview. So let's say for example, a few years later, someone else in your family, let's call him a, a cool uncle that you look up to says, hey kid, you gotta eat healthy if you're gonna grow up and be big and strong like me someday. Now you start watching this uncle and he looks like the superheroes that you watch on the Saturday morning cartoons. He's got a beautiful wife or a beautiful girlfriend, drives a nice car and you wanna grow up to be just like him someday. If your ego adopts this new worldview of I need to eat healthy so I can have this awesome life, it cannot also consciously hold on to the concept of ice cream makes everything better 
So it will banish it to the shadow. So what happens when you're 40 years old, you're 30 pounds overweight and consciously trying to get into better and better shape and make healthy choices? Well, your shadow is still hosting these beliefs or these qualities that are subconsciously working against you. Again, the sugar cravings or late night snacking shadow trait isn't trying to sabotage your goals out of some sort of malicious intent. In fact, it's actually trying to help you by soothing whatever hard time you're going through or make you feel better in the only way it knows how, just like grandma used to. Think of it like this. Imagine you're behind the wheel of a car and you get to drive the car any direction you want to in life. Get fit, make more money, travel to new cool places, become fearless, start a business, you know, really become any type of person that you want to be. But behind you in the back seat, there's a dozen other steering wheels being driven by past versions of you, either from childhood or even more recently, that are being steered by these other versions that have their own unique agendas for what they believe make you feel safe and happy. So you may be focusing on going straight ahead, but you have all these other steering wheels simultaneously going left, right, or even throwing the whole car in reverse. Till you identify what these unconscious shadow qualities are and shine some sort of light on them, hitting your goals is like being an ant walking in one direction, not realizing that you're walking on the back of an elephant who's walking in the opposite direction. This is because our conscious mind only makes up about 10% of our actions compared to the other 90% coming from our subconscious. This is where shadow work comes in. So what is shadow work? Now there are definitely different types of shadow work, but in this video, I'm gonna cover a step-by-step -step process you can use to start identifying and dealing with some of these shadow qualities that might be working against you. It's important to note, just like working out the body, repetition is key. All right. Let's jump in. Step one, start looking for certain symptoms. Because these shadow aspects that may be working against you are in the subconscious, it might be difficult to even be aware of their existence. In the example where your grandma gave you ice cream, you may just tell yourself as an adult, I like sweets or I'm a nighttime snacker. But if we do some digging, you'll see that these traits are actually red flags because they are actions that are not in alignment with the goals in life that you've set for yourself. How can I like sweets when they've made me feel sick, when they've made my clothes feel uncomfortable, when they've zapped the energy that I need at the end of the day to play with my kids? And time and time again, I tell myself I want to stop being a slave to them. To begin identifying some of these symptoms, which will in turn lead us to some of these shadow qualities, start by asking yourself the following. What do I repeatedly find myself doing that takes away from the outcome I want and leads to a sense of shame deep within after I do it? Maybe you find yourself people pleasing. Somebody brings in donuts to the office for their birthday and instead of telling them you're good and you, you don't want any, even though you've spent all morning exercising and planning your meals, you don't want to let them down. Maybe you find yourself procrastinating. I'll start tomorrow. I'll start on Monday. I'll start after vacation. I'll start on January 1st, so on and so forth. Maybe you find yourself justifying. Well, you know, I have three kids. What am I supposed to look like Ryan Reynolds? I'm doing pretty good considering all the responsibilities I have and all the stress I'm under. All of these may be symptoms of shadow qualities that you've repressed and that could now be working against you. Another way to recognize some potential shadow aspects in yourself is to analyze what traits seem to drive you absolutely crazy in other people. Projection is a psychological phenomenon that means we judge others or get triggered by personality traits in others that we subconsciously recognize and repress in ourselves. For example, at my old job, there was this girl there and she was always such a people pleaser and it drove me nuts. Even though she was really just trying to be nice to everyone, I couldn't stand to be around her because she just seemed so fake to me. Knowing what I know now though, it might be worth looking into the possibility that on a subconscious level, I may feel like there's an aspect of people pleasing that I see in myself that has been repressed and I may need to work on dealing with. It's helpful to label these shadow qualities of yourself so you can archetype them and start to understand and identify them easier. If I find myself procrastinating, I'd label that procrastination, Joel. 
I find myself self-sabotaging, that would be self-sabotaging Joel. If you want a list of common shadow traits, comment shadow underneath this video or just email me at joelstaleyfitness.com with the subject shadow and I'll get it over to you. Step two, observe your triggers. The easiest thing you can do to bring awareness to your shadow is to notice when an external event triggers an emotional reaction within yourself. For example, you come home and the house is a mess even though your wife was home all day. Even though you told yourself a hundred different times that day that you weren't gonna come home and drink, you then find yourself walking over to the whiskey cabinet and pouring a few fingers of Maker's Mark into your favorite tumbler. It'd be worth noting that potentially the stress of walking into a house that looks like a tornado came through it was the trigger. After doing some work, you might find that this stems from how your parents would react when your room was out of sorts as a kid. Or maybe the trigger comes from feeling like your wife doesn't care about you enough to try and pick up a little bit before she knows you're going to be home after a long day at work. Feelings of neglect or unimportance creep up, and as a coping mechanism, your shadow tries to comfort you by pouring you some booze to help you escape this feeling. Whatever you think it is, write these things down somewhere so you can track them. There's no need to overcomplicate it either. As you start this process, there's nothing else you really have to do besides just observe, report, and be present with what creates that emotional response inside of you. What this will do is create some space between your true self and your shadow, which is a very, very important step in the process. Step three, start to ask questions. Once you locate the symptom of a shadow quality that's creeping out from your subconscious and you can identify a common trigger associated with it, you can begin to ask yourself questions that will gradually pull the shadow quality out of the darkness and into the light. For example, let's say you're on a diet, but you find yourself getting upset with your kids for not finishing their dinner and you end up eating their leftovers. Since you ate the chicken nuggets and it's not in alignment with your goals, causing a little bit of shame afterwards, that would qualify as a symptom. If it were myself, I might label this as scarcity Joel or eats kids leftovers Joel. The trigger would be noticing that your kids told you that they were done eating or they got up from the table and left with food still on their plate. You may want to ask questions such as, what emotion comes up when I see my kids wasting food? Why does my kids having leftovers make me feel angry? Well, it makes me feel like they're being wasteful. Where do you think this emotional response stems from? Well, my dad would get upset if I wasted food and made me finishing I had on my plate when I was a kid. And how did that make you feel? Well, it felt like he was disappointed in me when I had leftovers. Does it make sense that you're eating your kids leftovers and sabotaging your diet? Or would there potentially be a better move to not feel like you're wasting money? There's probably a better move. What would that better move look like? so on and so forth. Now, obviously your line of questioning could go a hundred different directions, but the point is to try to understand why your shadow is working against your goals and how you can get it to serve you. In this example, we started to uncover that decades later, this guy may still be trying to avoid feelings like he was disappointing his dad for one reason or another. Pretty fascinating. It's worth noting you should keep a journal for this type of thing too. By getting it on paper, you'll be in a much better position to stay on track and document your findings to come back to later. Finally, step four, working on self-acceptance. Contrary to what you might be thinking, the goal cannot be to eliminate these aspects of the shadow, but instead has to be to work on accepting them as part of us. When we accept what is, these self-sabotaging behaviors loosen their grip on us and we can start to have a better result with our diet, exercise, finances, relationships, and really any other area we find ourselves self-sabotaging in. Now this doesn't mean accepting that you're gonna eat all your kids' leftovers and eat everything in the pantry at 9 p.m., but by starting to understand the real reason that we're doing these things, identifying the triggers and realizing the underlying emotions that we're trying to elicit, we can begin to reprogram our subconscious so that our ant and elephant are walking in the same direction. Let me know what questions you have about the shadow or shadow work in the comments, and I'll do my best to point you in the right direction so you can get the best results possible. 
Also, tell me if you like this kind of content and I'll keep it coming. Oh, and remember, comment below or just email me shadow to get a list of the shadow traits to watch out for. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next video.